The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 14th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, send me an email. Send that early. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Dead, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got that mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's up 92, the S&P's up 5, the NASDAQ 186. The semis are up 6. To the downside, it's the Russell off 24 points. The train is down 86. You've got gold basically flat trade in 1962 with silver up 23 pennies. That's about a 1% move for silver. 25.18 is the print. Lights we crude is back nearly 2%. 75.52 is the print there. Natural gas, it's uh, off a penny in the 30 year treasury printed out at 126.24. That is down eight ticks. Now, leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you've got United Health Group up 30 bucks. That's a 6% move. Elevin Self up 20 bucks, 5% move. EdTech Holdings up 46%, 20 point move as mill holdings two percent move or 16 bucks eli Lilly up 15 bucks three and a half percent to the downside pool corporation down 18 bucks nearly five percent united rentals three percent or 15 bucks mercado libre one percent 13 bucks blackrock 11 bucks nearly two percent shave medical 12 bucks a little over four percent to the downside there wait me what can i can you guys are uh there may be uh, looking at giving I don't, okay, I'm not sure what you're uh, native. I'll just keep going here. Um, I don't know if there's a problem in production or not. So let's. Uh, where do we want to begin? Tell you where we should begin. Let's do it like we have been here, which is take a look at market breadth, get a feel for where we're at market breadth for the five different time frames that we track. So let's pull that over. Let's look at the 30 minute time frame first. This will be for the S and P 500, the ES mini, and we can see that we're basically uh, uh, neutral here. You got 136 above, 135 below. So we've got a neutral signal for the S and P 500, and in the case of the NQ, we have a bullish signal. 30 34 above, 19 below. I'll pull up the uh, uh, the other time frames. What I can just share with you right now, they're all bullish. 6240. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, uh, for the. Uh, uh, sectors in the S&P 500. Here's your S&P 500. That's bullish across the board. Same thing with the uh, NASDAQ. So the only issue was a, a break even, a break even, a kind of a tie with regard to uh, up and down or above and below profile levels for the 30 minute time frame. So we know that market conditions right now from a profile standpoint are bullish. Now let's go take a look at what's going on from an intraday standpoint. Let's start by taking a look at the ES mini. The ES mini on a daily basis. What do we know about it? Prices above profile, above a green oscillator and change line. Those conditions are bullish. If we were to get a bearish reversal candle, we don't have any signal that we'll get that. We'll see as we move through these charts here. If we were to get a bearish reversal signal, what the heck happened there? Wow, that's weird. Um, 
uh, that uh, if we were to get a bearish reversal candle, uh, then we would uh, generate or it would generate a Rogemont to indicator top. In the case of the five hour time frame chart, it does have a TD nine count top out there, but price has been moving sideways. It's really gotten no traction and a close above. I don't think it closed above. Let me just make sure. Forty five fifty one fifty. This close was forty five fifty one fifty. It didn't qualify. It's got a close above it. A close above that forty five fifty one fifty negates that signal. Tells us about a strong move to the upside. But right now it's held. The four hour time frame chart TD nine count is in the process of completing right now at 2 p.m. at 2 p.m. at 2 p.m. price must close above in order for this TD9 count to take hold price must close above 45.38 on a two-hour time frame chart we're getting a signal here of a road's momentum indicator top this candle closes at 12 noon so we should have a pretty decent feel for it about uh, 40 minutes from now the 60-minute uh, time frame chart already has a road's momentum indicator top as does the 30 as does the 15 and a 10-minute chart I don't know what it's doing out here let me uh try just reloading my 10 minute template out here and see if that just solves whatever went on yeah there we go and that also has a road's momentum indicator top so now now that on the short-term basis we're trying to evaluate if there's going to be a top that forms stevie suspects that there is a top that's going to form by next week could form tonight could form today if a top is going to form we're going to see key levels of support on the intraday time periods fail now, we're getting pretty granular here, but when we take a look at a 10 minute and a 15 minute and even a 30 minute, let's take a look at those values. First value is 4540. That's both on the 15 and the 10 minute. Price is not busted through that, so we don't have any kind of signal that there's any potential change of trend just yet. The 30 minute level would be 452875, and level number two would be 451775. On the 60 minute chart, it's at 4525. And uh, we're at 48.09 on the uh, two-hour time frame chart. That's as far as we'll go with regard to the details out there. So we don't have any kind of topping signal. We're at bar number three on a daily uh, TD9 count pattern. Um, but there is that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. I would say if we do get a Rhodes momentum indicator top, odds favor that we may then see that uh, top that lasts through October. It's at least something that you and I, or we should at least consider. Now that's the ES mini. Let's go see what the NQ is doing out here. Let's pull up these charts. It's gonna take just a few moments here to populate. I'm not sure, but it's because of some of the things that I've got run in the background and there's just simply no way for me to change that as we speak. Um, I see, so I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble, there we go, what's happening? Um, do you guys hear me in the den? I don't know if there's an issue or not. Uh, I hate to be talking to thin air out here, but uh, th th maybe thin air is all that's going to listen to me. But I'm going to keep going. So with regard to the NQ, you can see basically similar patterns to the ES Mini. And that is, oh, perfect. Thanks, Mr. Bill. Price is moving higher, doing, le uh, doing a less relative energy. That's why we've got that Rhodes momentum indicator signal triggered. But price is above that green oscillator and change line. Conditions are just simply all out bullish. Uh, for the NQ, we took a look at market breadth. They're all out bullish. Now, on a uh, TD9 count pattern for the five hour chart, uh, there's none that exist. The four hour chart will complete its TD9 count pattern at 2 p.m. So watch that high, whatever that is. If there's a close above that, that pattern gets negated. No top on the two hour, no top on the one hour. Um, you got a 30 minute top that says watch profile levels, shoot. It's so far above uh, uh, support right now, but 15.717 would be the first area to be looking at. And I don't see anything really on a 15 or a 10 minute basis. Boy, this market's not going to top without the NQ doing so. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Looks like quite the uh, semi-final uh, match here um, with uh, Djokovic and Sinner playing. Looks like they're going into, yeah, oh, they're playing a, a tie break right now for the third set. In any event, uh, let's get to uh, some requests that have come in. The first request coming in from Alton wants to take a look at Schlumberger. So Alton's email reads like this. Good morning, Steve. If you have time, can you please review for us uh, Schlumberger? I'm in it. It's had a good run the last few days with good volume. You notice in your basic charts a, a TD9 count, a TD13 count. What do you think and where is support and resistance? Thanks. Have a great weekend. Okay. So first, regard with regard to your question about support and resistance, there's a new daily profile that formed today. The uh, top of that box, which is resistance, is 57.62. The bottom uh, it is a slightly bullish structured profile, Alton. So your bull zone, your buy zone, is between 54.83 and 55.76. On a daily basis, we see an A to B equals CD to the upside. No bearish reversal candle. So this is still bullish, just consolidating with inside its daily profile. On a weekly time frame, a close today about 56.21 will be a close inside a swing point with volume. The swing point had volume of 54 million shares. You're at 67 million shares as we speak right now. When you close inside a swing point, if it does close about 56.21 today, Alton, when you close inside a swing point with volume, odds favor, you're going to at least go test the high, perhaps take it out. So that says what we should see out here, you got 57.62 to still deal with, but you also then if you can get above that, that tells us about a run up to 59.45. So the weekly chart is telling you its intentions are to test the top of that swing point. The monthly chart has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. The B point was the month, or the B point that I'm using is the month of June of 2022. 344 million shares were traded. When that was taken out, that was taken out with 354 million shares. So there's a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD in Schlumberger that should take price up to 68.61. What price is dealing with right now are the sellers that reside at 56.85. Those are the monthly sellers that are out there. So. 
you're stalling. That makes sense to Stevie when we take a look at it. But it looks to me like Schlumberger, at least at this point in time, is telling us that it wants higher price. Now, let's go look at those white background charts. What are we going to see on the white background charts? I don't know. Let's go find out. So here we take a look at the daily TD, uh, daily chart out there. Alton made reference of the TD9 count on the daily time frame. That formed or completed on July 10th. The very next session, price closed above that high. That tells us about a strong upward momentum move. A strong word, strong word. A strong upward momentum move that is in place and is going on right now. Yes, I understand you've gotten to bar number 13 out there, but that doesn't mean that that's a top. So, Alton, um, maybe... Um, that, that does not mean that it's a TD sequential. So right now, so knowing that we do not have that kind of signal out here, Schlumberger looks to me like it wants to continue to move higher, but it's just simply dealing with that resistance level, the top of the monthly profile, 56.85. If price were to close below 54.83, the bottom of its new profile, maybe, but really, price could just be testing that green oscillator and change. Now, the new profile is not showing up on this system right here, but it is a new profile that you can rely on. So, Alton, I hope that I hope that that helps you out. Uh, and with regard to number of days, let's do this here. Let's let's further help Alton out. Number of days, the upside. Five consecutive days, the upside. It doesn't do more than seven typically. It's not unusual to see a pullback take place here. What you should expect is a two day pullback. So today is probably just bar number one, and I expect you would get a further pullback come uh, Monday. No guarantee, but that would be the likely outcome there. And then it resumes its move to the upside. Uh, last thing we can do for Alton is take a look at the seasonal pattern, if we can find one for SLB. So let's go see what this is doing. S SLB, see if this pops up. I hope that it does. There we go. So in the case of Schlumberger, we have a total amount of 41 years worth of data. And here on that seasonal pattern, this says we're still in the favorable seasonal cycle, which doesn't typically end until about the end of next week out there, July 24th. So it does look like to me Schlumberger wants to continue to move higher. Alton, I hope that that helps you out, and thanks much for taking the time to write in. Dan inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at ticker symbol RX. Is it RX, RX? RXRX, that is the symbol. Now, let me get, uh, yeah, okay, I'm on the white background charts, RXRX. So if we take a look at it, Dan, you've got the A to B equals CD to the upside. That's clear out here. And so the B point had volume there of, what, uh, 2.5 million shares. That was passed with 80 million shares out there. But nonetheless, it looks to me like you're getting a sell the D point pattern, potential sell the D point pattern today. Currently shows up as a dark cloud cover candle. Price is trading out at 12.04. It needs to close somewhere halfway in between the body of yesterday's candle. If it closes below that halfway point, that would be a dark cloud cover candle. That would then confirm a sell the D point pattern. You can see it had a TD9 count bottom. Here's A to B, or I'll get it somewhat approximately. I'm just gonna pull this over to the C point. Uh, which would be about, we'll just do it like that for right now. And so you can see it made more than the one-to-one, -one, but a bearish reversal candle, should that form, would tell you about a short-term top and price here, wanting to pull back to test that oscillator and change line, which would be about 936. On a weekly time frame, RXRX, what do you have out here? Here you have a A to B equals CD as well. Now that B point had 13 million shares, obviously you're at 115 right now. No reversal signal here just yet, but the daily is one to be paying attention to. The monthly price is trading above 1067, that's a top of its profile it has a road momentum indicator bottom everything looks good on rxrx dano it's just that daily time frame chart that might be signaling to us a move lower a just simply a test of that green oscillator and change line however lastly let's take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart out here what we don't have here in a 30 minute time frame chart is any signal of that pullback starting now why is that? Well, I've seen the most recent profile, the one that just formed here, is above the prior profile. That's a bullish outcome. You need to at least see a close below 1173 to suggest that maybe that pullback has begun. So I hope that helps you out with regard to RXRX. Your second request was to take a look at INMB out here. So let's go take a look at INMB. That is uh, trading out at uh, 1060. INMB, what do we see with regard to patterns? We see a Rhodesman to Mitigator top. We see a TD9 count top. And what we also see is price pulled back, did what it was supposed to do, test, and now reject its green oscillator and change line. Dan, the overall signal that I would have to give this is neutral. Neutral. 
simply because you still have a top that has not been taken out, but neutral because now support has been tested and that has held. Prices uh, got a, uh, a new profile out here. That formed yesterday. So your resistance level, one resistance level is 1099. The second resistance level, you can see on the weekly time frame, is that TD9 count breakdown area. So that's been tested this week at 1058. So that has been rejected. The bottom of the daily profile, 1134 on the monthly chart so far has been rejected. So neutral is what I've got to say here. Neutral. Just because the uh, TD9 count uh, resistance level on the weekly was uh, rejected doesn't mean that's a top. And just because price is struggling at the uh, bottom of the monthly profile does not mean that it is a top either. But we do know that price is struggling at those resistance areas out here. So overall, Dan, I've got to give this a, a neutral signal. If we try to see does uh, real quickly here while we're going to break. Let me see if I have a seasonal chart. INMB. And the answer is we do not. But that's okay. I think our view of the uh, chart was uh, sufficient. So we get back from this break here. We're going to take like, a light speed crew for John, the New York Stock Exchange advanced line oscillator for Peter, and the golf guy wants to take a look at shorting the NASDAQ 100. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com to hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com to hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Still a mixed bag out there. The uh, Dow up 108, S&P's up 8, uh, NASDAQ 102, Russell's off 22, Trenny's down to 84 out there. We'll take a look at Lightspeed Crew. This is for John C. inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, we have switched over. We have rolled over into the September contract. So what do we know about Lightspeed Crew? Well, first, from monthly time frame, uh, price is just simply consolidating with inside its profile. It's really consolidating between the bottom of its profile and its green oscillator and change line. That's between 69.61 and 82.77. The weekly chart shows the larger consolidation pattern. Uh, price is trading with inside its profile. Profile. It's at the center of that profile right now, which is up to the 7610 area. Close above 7610 should take us to 8109, the top of the profile. The daily time frame negated a TD9 count top yesterday. The pullback so far today is nothing more than a pullback of support, and support is the top of the profile at 7547. There were two consecutive closes above that. Oftentimes, old resistance becomes new support. We should know that by day's end. But as long as the top of that profile at 75.47 holds, then that becomes support out there. So the pullback, no big deal. So far, we take a look at the daily time frame. Now on a shorter term time frame, the 30 minute chart, let's expand this chart out, see what we see out here. I don't see much of anything other than I see breakout level at 74.32. We are trading below profile. Uh, you do have a buy the uh, D point pattern here that was uh, formed at that 11.30 session with that uh, bullish piercing candle. So price should target 76.14 or thereabouts. That's the 30 minute time frame chart. As we take a look at a 60 minute time frame chart, price right now is sitting at support. Support being 75.38, the bottom of its profile. The 120 minute chart uh, sitting at support, the bottom of its profile. The 240 price sitting at its breakout level of 75.23. So I would say at this stage here, in order for Lights Recruit to suggest that it wants to pull back to test the 7297 level, you need really two things. The first thing that you're going to need is at least a close back inside its profile, so it's a close below 74, 7547. But I'd also say you really need to see a close below 7496. And 7496 is the bottom of that five hour time frame chart out there. I would say if that level fails, then we're likely headed back to the uh, 72. 90 ish type area out there so that's what i see john when i take a look at lights recruit i hope that that helps you out well you know one thing else that one other thing that we could do one thing else that we can do another thing that we can do out here just out of curiosity um what is light sweet cruise light sweet light sweet crudes seasonal pattern so let's see how many years worth of data. We have 32 years worth of data out here. Boy, Light Street Crude looks like it's about ready to, seasonally speaking, that is, enter a consolidating period. Looks like it's supposed to top right around now out there. But that's that's over the last uh, 30 years. How about the last decade, the last 10 years out here? The last decade says we should be headed lower at this stage here. So, John, I hope that helps you out. I would uh, rely upon the uh, profile readings, the numbers that we took a look at, as opposed to that seasonal chart out there. Uh, so thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Peter wants to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. It's advanced client oscillator. So we're going to do that. That has achieved oversold status. So another reason why the market should begin to sell off a bit to work that off. So let's get over, take a look at that pattern here. Here's the New York Stock Exchange. That's in the upper panel. The uh, panel number two is the advanced decline line. The interesting thing here about the advanced decline line is it has broken through a descending trend line. Hmm, something to think about. But if we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator, which uses the advanced decline data, it just simply takes a look at the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of that daily data, because we're looking at a daily chart. And now what we can see here is yesterday and the day before, price closed above plus 150. When you close above plus 150, it generally speaking, it tells us about higher price that we will see in the future. It doesn't talk about tomorrow. It doesn't talk about the next day. It talks about maybe in the coming weeks or months out there so that is a bullish signal it also tells us that price has gotten to an overbought condition an overbought condition needs to work its way off well that's what's going on as we speak right now if we take a look at the new york stock exchange any further let me see here how can i do this hmm. i know i can do it i just have to figure out how to do it so uh no that's not it um Knee-jerk reaction, daily, weekly, monthly. Let me try this here. 
And I'm going to know momentarily. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the New York Stock Exchange. We just want to take a look at consecutive days higher, consecutive days lower out here. So if you would just give me a moment to, um, right now it's populating with the gold contract. I need to let that take place, and I'll put the New York Stock Exchange in here, and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. Go ahead, populate it, would you? Populate it. Come on. Maybe I've got too much data in there. And my... Jeez, that didn't work. NY. Sorry about the delay here. Okay, so we got that. Now it's going to populate that. So what else can I see here? Now we do have the... Uh so anyways, it's working off its overbought condition. It, that's really, that's the message. There's two messages. That message and the fact that we should still expect and anticipate higher price. That's what uh, getting above that plus 150 reading means. Now, let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange charts. We'll take a look at daily, weekly, and monthly. We're looking for the, we're looking at the consecutive closes higher and lower out here. So we're going to really take a look at the uh, daily time frame. And on a daily basis out here, yesterday was uh, bar number five of consecutive daily moves higher we do oops not showing hold on go live okay so now we're live out there so now you should be able to see this chart and uh, we've seen some seven consecutive day moves a six consecutive day moves but it's typically three to four bars out there and then we see typically a two bar pullback so the new york stock exchange it has to work off that overbought condition peter i would expect and anticipate that what we see here is a, a two at least a two bar pull back out there. So I hope that that helps you out. And uh, let's go to our call. Let's go to Dave in Framingham. Dave, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Do we have Dave? Do we have Dave? Yeah, Earth? I'm right here. Ah, perfect. Dave, sorry, I couldn't hear you there. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. So the mining ETF, the GDX, is what you're calling about. Dave, what can I do? How can I best help you? Yeah, could you tell me an entry point here for that? Ent sure, sure. Well, I'll do my best to tell you an entry point. Thank so you. We've, we've had the uh, GDX that uh, formed a nice little rose momentum indicator bottom. It's got an A to B equal CD pattern that's underway here. And as far as where could price pull back to? So I believe this is um, this is the fifth. Yesterday was day number five of consecutive closes higher. Today could be bar number six of that. Uh, I'll just, in fact, I'll pull over this chart here first. So I want, want, want us to take, to take a look at that. We just reviewed this, in essence, with the, uh, lab, the New York Stock Exchange. So this is going to be bar number six, which is pretty unusual. We did have a five-bar move out here back on March the 3rd. This says that we should expect and anticipate a retracement. So the first level that I would give you, Dave, is a two-bar pullback. I don't know what that price would be, but if you do get a two-bar pullback, you might want to consider at least beginning a position inside the GDX. If this is a very bullish market, which I expect and anticipate that it is, all we should really see is a two or three day consecutive pullback here. So that's at a price level, and it's not uh, it's not in force yet today, but that's the first thing that I'll be waiting for, and we should see the market, we should see the GDX begin to pull back. Do me a favor, Dave, hold on through this break. We'll take Thank a look you. at the other charts for the GDX, and I'll answer any other questions that you have as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the GDX. This is with uh, Dave in Framingham, uh, Massachusetts. So the first area, Dave is asking for an entry area into the GDX. So the first thing we covered before we went to break was the potential of a two-day two consecutive pullback. And that might be the entry area. If I were to try to give you a price projection right now, there would be two. And I'm looking at the daily time frame chart. Price is closed above the top of its bearish structure or its daily profile. It's been above it for now uh, three sessions. So old resistance could become new support. So a price area would be 3130. That would be the first price area. Now, if we get a two day pullback and uh, price hasn't gotten down to 3130, do you uh, take that trade? The easy way to answer that question would be to look at some type of intraday chart and look for some type of pattern there that would confirm that. It could be as simple as a pattern of seeing higher lows and higher highs, perhaps. Uh, Dave, I don't know if, you, you know, if you're a technical yeah. trader or not. Um, uh, Steve, yeah, do you ahead. see the 3050 getting filled at all, the gap there, like? Back in around March, there it filled the gap. I'm wondering um, if it's going to fill a gap there at 30.50. So uh, I guess I, I I would. It's always the potential. Yeah. But do I see it? Do I see it right now? I wouldn't. That's not what I would be hoping for. Okay. That's not what I see right now. Now, here, the reason I say that um, is uh, is because we've now cleared the uh, profile. I mean, let me open up the daily time frame chart for the GDX. Let's look at this together. So what we've got here is, what do we have here? We've got really a nice solid bottom on the uh, daily time frame. And uh, we've got an A to B equals CD pattern. So at this stage here, it looks to me like this could be a very significant bottom. And I'm going based upon that, really based upon taking a look at gold itself. And gold has had a two-month pullback. And if this is a significant bottom, then, then, then that was it. Then the low that we saw in uh, June... Uh, or maybe it was the 1st of July or what have you. That, that's a law that we won't see for quite some time to okay. uh, come. But it's not a guarantee, as you know. Um, right. And so the, the one thing that where the GDX is struggling right now, Dave, is at the bottom of its weekly profile. And in order for – so to – 
to give a definitive answer, I would say that price will not come back to fill that gap. I would need to see the GDX close above 3325. And 3325 is the center of its bullish structured profile. If this is only a counter trend move, then where price would find resistance is either at the bottom of the profile, 3229, or the center at 3325. But if price closed above 3325, that tells me that we have a definite change in trend here. And not just should price get up to 3515, but we probably have seen a significant bottom inside the mining equities. We're talking about a significant bottom. But yeah. uh, to answer your question, can it pull back there? Yes. To answer your question, where's that entry point? Price-wise, I'd use 3130. Day-wise, I'd use a two consecutive hour pullback in lieu of anything else that I can find on my charts right now. Does, oh, okay. is, any questions about that information? No, that's good. Okay, I was just kind of curious here because I kept kept on looking at that gap. If it's going to get filled, gaps get filled at certain time, you know. Um, yeah, so. Not, like you're saying, it may not pull back. Yeah, and, and gaps can eventually get filled. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have to. Right. You know, the other right. thing that I would do, um, and, and I, I don't have the time to do this right now, uh, but to the extent that you, you can pull up a chart and you can look to see if there's other gaps that have gone unfilled in there, that might also help you answer that question in your mind. And I don't know with yeah, regard was, to the GDX. Yeah, I was looking at the March 13th gap. Right. And it, no, I get that. It didn't get oh. filled. <laughs> March 13th. So let's uh, let's come back to March 13th. Um, See, it went up for three it, days after yeah. it gapped up, and then it pulled back for one day. Like you're saying, it may pull back maybe Monday. Yeah, it didn't. That gap, that that gap did not get filled. Um, yeah, you know. And it, I guess I haven't done the study to go back to take a look at. But but one thing with that uh, that phraseology of gaps get filled. You know, on each individual stock chart. Go back. You can see the gaps, or you should be able to see the gaps yeah. uh, fairly easily, and and see if right. in fact that's the case for that stock chart. Because each, you know, the GDX um, is is so influenced by what's happening in gold or gold right. and silver out there that you know th 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 there may be open gaps. So uh, things look yeah. pretty bullish out there, and uh, uh, yeah, you should want to, to enter into the GDX at least at this oh. stage of the game. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Nice okay. to hear from you. That was Dave in uh, Framingham. Uh, so the golf guy had asked about shorting the NQ out here. I'll get to his messages, or his message, but let me first get really to the NQ charts. And let's take a look at this version here. But let's take a look at the question. It says, can you check the SQQ or more so the NASDAQ if your charting shows a NASDAQ pause? Might the SQQ be the one to uh, look at? So the NASDAQ pause would go like this. We're taking a look at the NQ, and we're looking at a weekly time frame chart. And as we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we see two different things. You see the A to B equals CD pattern that is in play out here. And what you also see is this week is going to become bar number nine of a TD nine count pattern. So earlier in the show, I said I suspect that we're going to see some type of a uh, top in the market. And it could be that July top that leads to a low in October. So I don't want to discount that. But that says that that top uh, should take place this week or next week. Okay, so we're on a weekly chart, a uh, golf guy, or uh, um, uh, uh, we're on a weekly chart that has a potential of a TD9 count. Now, it's going to form the TD9 count top. The question is, is that taking place, that topping pattern taking place this week or next week? Well, the cool thing about being on a weekly chart is we can now go to the daily chart. We can step down one time frame and see what signals we have out here. Well, what signals do we have? We have price moving higher, doing less relative energy, and we know if a bearish reversal candle forms, that will then confirm a roads meant to mitigate top. We don't know whether price will break through support, but we do know then that we would have a weekly and a daily top. And then, golf guy, I would say that would be the time to go ahead and take that position. Earlier, we were taking a look at the NQ, and I was looking at shorter-term time frames, 10 and 15-minute charts, and I was providing, maybe you got that information, a level that price would at least have to close below in order to suggest that maybe that top is starting right now. Um, here, when I take a look at these, uh, so watch the five-hour chart on the end. Well, no, watch the four-hour chart on the NQ. At 2 p.m., it will complete a, a TD9 count pattern out there. Does that TD9 count in the next two and the two hours that precede that, does that take out any levels of support? What was the level of support that we were looking at that was key? I want to see if I have those charts back up on our screen still. Um, we do. And I believe that the number that I provided was 15. 
No, I think it was for the ES Mini that we did that. It was the ES Mini that we did that for. Clearly was the ES Mini. Where does price need to bust through to suggest that maybe that uh, top that we just took a look at is getting ready to start? I'd have to say 15, 690, 25, even though it comes from that 15 minute time frame, that would be a pretty good first place to start out there, golf guy. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the NQs out there. I don't see right now as being the time to go ahead and take that short. Uh, Yvonne writes in, she wants to take a look at uh, Snowflake out there. S N O W is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's see, what is the question out here? Love your show. Please analyze snow and Baba. Have a great day. When I take a look at Snowflake, it's trading above the top of its profile. It's trading above its green oscillator and chain sign. It's trading into a swing point that has volume of 6.5 million shares. It's doing it so far with 2.5. That's pretty decent volume. Looks to me like Snowflake wants to go tackle that swing high. That's up at that 193.94 level. And if it closes above 182.92, at least as of 11.50, that is the message. When we come back from this break. We'll finish looking at Snowflake. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. So we're taking a look at Snowflake out here. Daily has told us it wants to go tackle the highs. Price is pushing into that swing point with volume. The weekly chart just shows us a consolidation. 
with inside its bullish structured profile. And that's between 163.44 and 188.86. You close above 188.86, price should make its way up to 206.74. That's the bottom of its monthly profile. That's what I see when I take a look at Snowflake right now. Let's look at your second request, which was Alibaba. When I take a look at Alibaba, it's got a uh, B point out here that was passed. That was from uh, June 16th. 25 million shares there. That was passed yesterday with 24 million shares. The day before, 24 million shares as well. So Alibaba may in fact be setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. The weekly chart, the swing point had 101 million shares. You're passing it with 105. So on a weekly basis, Alibaba has generated a small A to B equals CD to the upside. So that's really confirming what, in essence, we were looking at on the daily time frame. So A to B, will move this line over here to the C point. That should take us up basically to its TD9 count breakdown area, and that is in the 100.91 level. Oh, I think that is, hold on. Uh, yeah, 100.91 looks to be the uh, price target or approximate price target for Alibaba. So hope that helps you out, Yvonne. There was a request to take a look at what was that? Uh, ASPN. Uh, that's for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, ASPN is uh, right now uh, has a TD9, a daily TD9 count top, Dan. And what that says is that price should pull back to test that oscillator and change line. We're printed to 847, 849. Price should pull back and test 832. If price closes below 832, that doesn't mean it's a major top. It just means the price will test the next level of support, and that would be at 814. If price closes below 814, well, then we're back to the 774, 733-ish range out there. On a weekly basis, you've got a daily TD9 count top, the weekly hitting the top of its profile level. So not to be uh, – so it makes, makes all the sense in the world, right? You get up to a resistance level on a larger time frame, you should see topping signals on a shorter time frame. That's what we've got. But right now, conditions are neutral on the daily time frame because price is above the green oscillator and change line and the top of its daily profile. Thanks so much for all the requests out there all week long. Much appreciated. I want everybody to have a fabulous, a fantastic weekend. I know I'm going to. You should, too. And I'll see you back here on Marvelous Monday. Take care, folks. Be safe.